In March of 2019, a massive chemical fire broke out at the ITC facility located in the Houston Ship Channel near Deer Park, Texas. It took first responders several days to put out the fire. That week, nearby residents were told to shelter in place twice, the second time because of high benzene emissions. Five days later, people resumed their lives as normal. However, an investigative series by Public Health Watch and the Texas Tribune found that there were very high levels of pollution in the area long after the shelter-in-place order had been lifted. Our investigation found that on at least seven days after residents were told everything was back to normal, benzene levels continued to spike to huge levels beyond the level officials had said they'd used to warn the public. It raised a lot of questions about why the public was not told that this EPA ban was seeing many high readings of benzene in the area for days and even weeks after the fire first broke out. Air pollution, you know, is just not a single pollutant. You're causing mixtures. So being exposed to benzene, PM 2.5 from the fire, possible nitrogen oxides, and all that. Records showed that hundreds of people reported symptoms of chemical exposure and nearly a thousand people sought medical attention in the two weeks after the fire. The reporting also showed that concerns were raised about the safety at ITC long before the fire broke out. What we try to do is document throughout the years how the TCEQ, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, and then the EPA went back to that same facility over and over and over and pinpointed that same cluster of tanks. There was nothing really done to curb them, and that cluster of tanks, lo and behold, is the one that ultimately caught fire in 2019. After the story was published, we did not hear from the EPA or the City of Deer Park regarding what they might do differently in the future. So ITC's permit hearing for renewal was conducted a few weeks after the article came out and we had community members reading off segments of the article. We had public officials referencing the article within their statements as to why the facility should not have its permit renewed. A federal investigation released on July 6 by the U.S. Chemical Safety and Hazard Investigation Board showed that the 2019 fire could have been prevented. You know, it's still clear that more needs to be done on the state, federal, and local levels to ensure that communities are protected and informed about air pollution during these emergency events at chemical facilities. For example, an amber alert, we can have that for chemical disasters as well. Fence line monitoring should be the norm. The EHN Newsroom is powered by Environmental Health Sciences, a nonpartisan nonprofit that drives good science into public policy and public discussion.